for the banking community are happy to um, uh, be here at this time with these new stimulus packages that uh, allow us the opportunity for, to participate um, to directly help these small businesses um, survive and, um, and, and thrive through this time. Um, and I do think that this new stimulus package that was recently passed that we'll be discussing um, is uh, certainly going a long way toward doing that. And we'll discuss how um, small businesses, if they have yet to apply, how they can, um, how they can apply and, and play in different locations they can apply to um, receive some of this funding. So, Very good. Um, well, before we jump into the phase three, could you give us just a short description of phase one and two, kind of just an overview of what both of those phases provided for us? Sure. So, um, and, and sorry, you're kind of cutting out, you're asking about phase one? Phase one and phase okay. two. Sure, yeah. So, um, as it relates to federal stimulus for um, small business, uh, really the combined phase one and phase two um, was a $50 billion um, stimulus package that was, um, that was direct through the SBA. And, um, and that was called the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. So um, as I'm sure many small businesses had heard of, um, this, uh, this program rolled out rather quickly. Um, you know, there were some uh, little bit, you know, I call them hiccups along the way that were direct through the SBA when the, the website was crashing, but there were a number of small businesses that applied for these loans. Um, what uh, I believe Congress was realizing was that $50 billion, um, there needed to be much more allocated towards small businesses um, to, uh, to help nationwide. Um, and, and so as uh, Jumping ahead, um, and I'll go back to the, the EIDL loan um, if, if someone is still interested in applying for that, although I think the second round is really where you should be focusing at this point. Um, the space three. Funds that were allocated. Um, as many people are aware, there were funds that there are funds being sent directly to um, individuals at a certain income level. Um, so specific to small businesses, um, the, there was $349 billion, billion allocated. Um, that was through the SBA, but um, the difference between the first round um, with the $50 billion and the second round is that um, this uh, package is uh, being directed through banks. And so small businesses are being directed to apply directly through local banks and um, and banks of all sizes really um, to receive this funding. And this, this program went live on Friday. And um, I, uh, I can get into the details of the program, but if you want to talk any more about the phase one, I'm happy to do that. Oh, well, that sounds good. And I think that uh, important point to make, uh, so on these phase three uh, loans, then businesses and, and sole proprietors, they need to, reach out to their local bank uh, to help them uh, process this. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So um, I'll jump into kind of the mechanics of the second program and, or, and, and uh, program. Um, and in the name itself, um, the focus of the program is uh, primarily towards payroll. 75% um, of the loan proceeds uh, um, you're required to use towards payroll. And so it's really directed toward um, keeping your employees on staff, whether um, you had to go through the unfortunate cycle of laying off employees. Um, this is an opportunity to bring them back in the fold and keep them on payroll for uh, the next uh, couple months. So um, the program itself um, is, uh, as you said, it's, it's direct through banks and um, the, uh, uh, each bank has the same application forms that are required uh, through the SBA, um, although the processes are a little different for each bank. Um, what we have been encouraging at Bank First is for um, uh, existing customers to apply with us and non-existing customers, if you, have an, if you have a relationship with your existing bank, we encourage you to go and speak with them first um, because most banks are participating at this point. And um, it's as easy as, uh, you know, in some cases going to a bank's website. In other cases, it's reaching out to your local branch or a loan officer. 
And um, whether you have a relationship with a loan officer or not, um, reach out to your bank and ask about the payroll protection program. Um, what is so great about this program is that if you use the loan proceeds from this program um, towards specific purposes, the loan is forgiven after eight weeks. So um, the per purpose is, and I mentioned that 75% of it has to go towards payroll, that's payroll costs, including compensation, health benefits, uh, 401k match. Um, you can also use it towards utilities. Uh, you can use it towards rent. Um, you can also use it towards, if you, if you have a mortgage on your building um, as a small business, you can use it towards that mortgage payment. Um, and you can, uh, I mentioned this as part of the payroll cost, but you can use it towards those uh, healthcare packages um, that, are, um, that you may have for your employees. So if you stay within the confines of those categories right there, then um, after eight weeks of using these funds, I mean, you do have to use the funds within eight weeks. Um, you, uh, the loan uh, should be forgiven in full at that point. And so um, if for any reason you have funds that you use for additional purposes, um, let's say just uh, working capital for the business, um, that, uh, that remaining amount converts into a two-year note at a 1% interest rate. So, um, you know, if, if uh, for some reason, again, your whole note isn't forgiven, you still have a pretty attractive two-year loan at a 1% interest rate. Um, so it's uh, not all is lost at that point. Um, you, you're left with a, a pretty decent um, term loan there as well. So um, one thing to mention, uh, just how, how to come up with your loan request amount. So um, this, this loan package, again, is based on, is primarily based on payroll. So um, the uh, calculation is two and a half times your average monthly payroll from 2019, assuming you were in business in 2019. If you were a new business, but you opened up at the start of the year in 2020, um, and you didn't have a full year of payroll in 2019, then you can use your, use your January and February payroll and average those together to come up with the loan amount. So um, it's your average monthly payroll, two and a half times that amount. So um, again, when we think about how this is supposed to be used, um, it's used over eight weeks time, so that two and a half times is supposed to take your payroll through eight weeks in addition to your, to your, to your uh, utilities, rent, um, or mortgage. And so um, in addition to uh, any interest-bearing loans that you had as of February 15th. It's another important point to make. Um, the uh, February 15th, 2020 is an important date. Um, that is the date that um, you, uh, it's basically what, uh, how, how many individuals you had on staff at that, at that time in your total payroll. That's kind of your benchmark for where they want you to be um, back to um, when you receive those funds or within that eight week period um, when you receive those funds for this loan to be forgivable. So, um, Again, I'll, I will say, I'll just reiterate, um, I encourage you to reach out to your local banks. Um, here in Norman, uh, I know that there's a number of banks participating, but um, you know, Bank First is participating, Armstrong, 1NB, um, there are several others. Uh, please uh, reach out that way first. Um, and the primary reason for that is, um, it, you know, in our case, we will be um, considering non-Bank First customers. However, uh, the the banks are pretty overloaded at the moment, um, and so it's important to uh, reach out to those you have a relationship with, even that if that's just a deposit account, it's a personal checking account, a business checking account, um, so that way you've already had that established relationship and it, it gives you a, a little bit of a foot in the door um, as far as priority there. Now, what's the, Cameron, what's the difference then between uh, the phase three PPP program and then the idle loan uh, from the initial uh, phase one and two? Sure. So um, the EIDL loan, um, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, which was direct to the SBA, that was the $50 billion that I discussed earlier. Um, that, uh, that loan has a lot of similarities as far as what the uses are. Um, the term, that is a loan. It's not a forgivable loan, although that if you receive that loan prior to March 31st, 
that um, loan can be rolled into uh, this payroll protection program loan and potentially be forgiven if used for the right purposes. But if, if um, you have yet to apply for it, um, I will say the, um, they had a flood of applications over the first week or two. Um, it's still worth uh, applying for because there was a later addition. Um, I think it was five or six days later that there was a $10,000 grant included. That, um, that, is a, that is a true grant um, as far as we understand that if you uh, potentially, if you do not qualify for the EIDL loan, or in some cases, even if you do qualify, you still receive that $10,000 grant. That was a limited, uh, that was a limited funding package as well. So um, I can't speak to whether uh, there's still funds available for that, but I have encouraged any business to go out there and apply for that uh, EIDL loan, if nothing else, to apply for that $10,000 grant, assuming those funds are still available. Um, so so um, that first loan was a 30 year, 3.75% um, working capital loan. Um, there were, uh, they classified it as a working capital loan, but there were some specific purposes required for that. Um, it's, it's our assumption um, with, with the discussions that we've had with the SBA and the guidance received, um, the, the payroll protection program is really where businesses focus should be. And that, it, that includes a, anything from a sole proprietor, single employee business, um, to uh, businesses that have 400 employees. Um, the the uh, size standard um, for this employee protection, or sorry, the payroll protection program is 500 employees or less. And so, um, you know, here in Norman, that covers most any company we have. Um, and, uh, and so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's effectively available to almost any business. You know, that's again, that's that's where the, the small businesses are going to get the greatest benefit. Um, and uh, it's it's also important to note too um, that that as part of that eight week to make it forgivable, yes, you have to use it for the right uh, loan proceeds. Um, the again, uh, wages uh, or really payroll costs in total, um, utilities, um, uh, mortgage and or rent. Um, and then interest on loans that you had prior to February 15th. Um, the important piece I was gonna say is that you wanna keep good records because these, this is potentially subject to an audit. And, um, and so uh, you, that loan may be forgiven. You don't wanna to have to pay that, those funds back um, by not keeping good records. So make sure that you're keeping good records within those um, loan proceed categories. Yeah, I was going to ask, what, do you, what would you recommend a client uh, show up to your office with as far as paperwork goes for the PPP program? Sure. Um, so the, uh, basically the standard application, um, we received guidance from the SBA on what exactly needed to be included on Friday when these went live. Um, there, is a, there is an application out there. If you search for payroll protection program application, you will find find it, download. Um, so that there's an application itself um, to verify the two and a half times average monthly payroll. The SBA is asking for your 941 quarterly payroll tax pay, payroll returns from 2019. So that's four 941s from 2019. And that's to verify um, basically the, they have a calculator that they take the, the four quarters and they average that over 12 months. And so that's the verification there. If you're a newer business and you didn't, you weren't in operation all of 2019, then you'll want to um, you'll want to keep have, provide internal records um, or potentially if you go through a third party sort of service for payroll um, from February 2020 or sorry January 2020 and February 2020 because that's your calculation there. Um, so that's to verify. Um, there's a, another form called a modified beneficial form. That's just something you, your banker will provide when you, when you ask about the application itself. Um, there, is, uh, there are a number of uh, payroll calculators out there that kind of make this easy for you. And so um, I would search around for that. But again, I would ask uh, your uh, bank of choice for um, uh, some form of payroll calculator to kind of get you a head start there.
So um, make sure to have your articles and incorporation and your operating agreement teed up. So then that way you can hand the entire package over as one um, and uh, you won't follow the back of the line depending on how the, the bank is, is going through the queue there. And can you can you stack both the phase three and, and phase one and two programs together or are they one or the other? So you can you can roll the phase one into the phase three. Um, and uh, my understanding is that that's if you had received the loan prior to March uh, 31st. Um, the uh, the what what we're you know what we're kind of unclear on is who has actually received that loan. Um, we have bank customers that applied for that loan within the first hour or two and have yet to hear back from the SBA on that loan. And so um, that's rolling it into the total loan amount for this, this phase three. Um, so that's why I see, that's why I keep saying um, to really focus on this payroll protection program at this point. Um, and and then go back and apply for that EIDL so then you could potentially receive that $10,000 grant that you can receive both payroll protection and that $10,000 grant. Very good. And in your experience uh, so far, because this was a, a limited program, the payroll protection program, $350 billion, uh, any idea if it's if we're to the cap yet? I mean, is I'm sure there's been a lot of interest, but any, any idea how close we are to utilizing all those dollars? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, I mean, every, every bank and business out there is wondering the same thing. Um, I will tell you that uh, you know, some of the uh, banks like Bank of America and Wells Fargo, um, and I think even Chase in some cases where um, they were still kind of getting up to speed with some of the guidance. And I think just because they were rolling out such a, such a large program for so many customers. Um, when, when those banks get rolling, I, I expect these funds to, uh, to go rather quickly. And so um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not one to rush anybody. But um, in this case, I say the earlier the better because you, uh, you really want to not only um, you know, get in line with your bank, but um, you, we're, we're, we're Oklahoma and this is a nationwide program. And there are some large, the loan amounts can be up to $10 million. And, um, and so, uh, and there are a number of businesses even here in this state that are applying for amounts up to that amount. And so you can imagine in states like New York and uh, California, uh, there you know there's there's probably thousands of uh, hundreds of thousands of businesses that are applying for million dollar plus loans. And so, um, so I you know we there Congress has been giving the indication that um, they will not allow funds to be run out. Um, they will make future allocations, but again, there's no um, you know you don't want to assume anything. And small businesses and and so I encourage you to take advantage of this first round um, even if uh, even if funds do uh, run out within um, a couple weeks and future allocations uh, come down the pipeline um, you want to be part of this first round because there's the potential that um, funding from this round and additional round as well. So take advantage of whatever you can. So uh, in the question about um, independent contractors, uh, where, where do they fit into uh, to this kind of program? Great question. Yeah, and I should have mentioned that earlier. So um, the uh, 299 contractors cannot be included in a business's payroll application as part of this uh, first round. However, the SBA is allowing 299 contractors to apply individually. Those applications open up on Friday. So um, the general small business application opened up um, this past Friday. 1099 contractors, you will use the same application. Uh, the required documentation may differ slightly um, just because the, you may not have the same 9041 quarterly tax returns. You, you basically provide whatever payroll documentation you can provide you for yourself from 2019. But those will open up on Friday. So if you are a 1099 contractor, you can apply. I encourage you to, again, reach out to your bank right now to get that started. So then that way you'll be ready to put that in on Friday. 
So again, that needs to go through the uh, your local financial institution, even if you're a 1099. Correct. Okay, very good. I've got a, Cameron, if you don't mind, I've got a question here on uh, Facebook. Uh, this is from Jennifer, Jimmy Johns, mm -hmm. and she was wanting to know uh, if the, um, when the PPP program was approved, how long does it take to get the funds? Sure. So, um, you know, that's really bank by bank, but what's really great about this is that um, the, uh, these funds are immediately available as fast as the bank is, is able to move. Um, the, there have been, I think the latest uh, update from the uh, SBA is there's been uh, over 30 billion in the businesses funded already and this opened on Friday. So um, I know at Bank First we funded a number of businesses already, um, but it's, uh, you know, that's a question to ask um, your local financial institution, um, it, you know, but I know I can tell you, I have spoken to um, uh, friends of mine who work at 12 different banks and everybody is working around the clock to make these things go. Um, that's really what we saw as the primary benefit as this, this second round with this phase three funding is that the fact that it was direct through banks, um, it allowed the banks to uh, basically control the speed of the process, um, which has made things go much quicker than the first round. I want to put a plug in right now uh, for people that may be viewing this. Uh, please go to Chamber's website, uh, normanchamber.com. We have some links on there to uh, forms for the SBA. So if you're interested in phase one or two, there's links there to, to go through that process. And then also we have a list of local financial institutions. Uh, if you don't have a active relationship with, with one, then please get on there and, and, and find a, a local bank that you can bank or credit union that you can um, work with. But, um, but many of you probably have somebody already, but, but I would encourage you to, to reach out to them. And again, we have those resources. Some of the documentation that Cameron mentioned earlier through, for the PPP is also listed on our website. So you can go there, check it out beforehand. Uh, but I guess really the kind of the immediate message is don't wait, right? We need, people need to hop on this now and, and uh, make sure they get, get in the queue. Absolutely, yeah. And I, um, again, every bank I've talked to is working around the clock to make this thing work. Um, the, and it is working, which is good. Um, that's, uh, that's what we all need right now. Now, um, so for what's best for their business. Um, There's something you mentioned that, uh, uh, oh, I, I was going to say with the list of financial institutions through the Chamber's website, I encourage you to reach out if, again if, if um, either your bank is not participating or your, um, uh, or you are um, taking loans from non bank customers. And so, um, please go down that list and, and, and reach out. Um, and, and Bank First is doing the same, um, but we, we are, our priority is, is uh, existing bank customers. And so, um, again, expediency is in your best interest. And so, you know, find whatever's best for you. Yeah, ironically, this is the first time uh, in my knowledge uh, where I've, I've heard that from banks that they're like, we, we're normally, Banks and credit unions are very eager to take uh, new new customers, take on new clients, but with the uh, demand that is underway right now, everybody's like, we're taking care of our, of our existing customers. Uh, so so it, this has been a, a unique experience, I know, for, for a lot of businesses, kind of first, uh, first time that this is a, something like this has ever happened. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I think, um, you know, it's, it's, I don't want to call it exciting, but I'm, 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 I'm glad that this is working and, um, and that people have options and and I can option here in Norman. And so, uh, reach out and, and 
you'll be taken care of. Cameron, besides going to uh, your bank website or to the Chamber of Commerce website, is there any other uh, resources that you would uh, want to direct business businesses to to find out more information? Versus, I think it's a. And sorry, you, uh, you're cutting out. I don't know if you'd finished your sentence there. Um, the. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I've looked through the resources on Chamber's website, and um, I, I thought it was a fantastic list of uh, resources. I, um, you know, I keep uh, seeing you know different researchers come out here left and right. I don't, I don't have anything specific. Specific. Don't feel like uh, you're in this alone. Um, there are a number of businesses who are sharing their own stories. Um, you know, one thing that. I'm encouraged about um, is that uh, I is the innovation that's occurring from small businesses during this time. Um, you know, whether it's uh, smaller studios, their employees working virtually. Um, you know, it, it's it's uh, this is. There, there are some silver linings to, that are going to come from this, um, and uh, you know, just as entrepreneurs, think outside the box, and um, and then take advantage of this funding, and, um, and 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 talk with each other, work work through chambers to um, converse, even if that's online through Zoom meetings or whatever it may be. Um, there's there's opportunities, and you're not alone. I think that's a great way to kind of wrap up our con our conversation today is that there's opportunities and you're not alone. There's a, a lot of great resources out there. I've been so impressed with, um, with uh, you and our other local bankers who have stepped up and they've been all in on wanting to help out our local businesses. So on behalf of them, I want to say thank you to you and the other um, financial experts that are in our community. They're looking out for, for our local business and their employees. And also, uh, I want to let everybody know that we're going to be doing more of these Facebook Live events via Zoom. So be on the lookout. Uh, we've, we've got one scheduled tomorrow morning with a local physician to talk about healthcare related issues and how we can all contribute uh, to the solution on that side of the ledger. And then uh, later this week, I, I think we've got a special interview set up with um, somebody from our federal legislative delegation and some other things. So uh, anyway, just stay tuned. Uh, certainly plug into our, our emails and, and social media posts that are going on. If you haven't yet, I would encourage people to go to Together for Norman Biz. That's Together, the number four, Norman Biz. Uh, it's a great uh, Facebook group that is allowing local businesses to help promote uh, things that they're doing, whether it's financing, like we talked about today, or maybe you've got uh, a curbside pickup option going on in your business, or you're um, serving your customers in some unique way right now. We wanted to give you an open format to be able to share that with people around Norman. So please check out Together for Norman Biz on Facebook. That's a group. So take a, take a look at that. Cameron, thank you uh, so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Appreciate your expertise and your input. Uh, as we mentioned when we started this, I know you're very, very busy. So thank you, thank you. for having out a little bit of time for us. Okay, appreciate it, guys. Um, and um, yeah, hang in there and we'll, uh, we'll make it through together. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay.